and welcome back to Who Would Win. Today's Who Would Win comes to us from James. I don't know how to exactly you pronounce your name. It looks almost like Bunyip, like the um, uh, the Australian cryptid, but I think it's Boynip. Boynip and Boynip. Um, either way, James, you asked the question, who won a fight? Oh, you card from Helsing. Ultimate, Bridge, whatever, it's Helsing. It's the same series. Versus Vampire Hunter D, but it's specifically the novel interpretation of uh, Vampire Hunter, Vampire Hunter D. Uh, so, let's go with Alucard first, because I'm actually, I have um, uh, D's abilities, and you know, all, I have his entire stuff up here. So let's go with Alucard first, because he's, I've done him, God knows what he's done Born Vlad Tepish, uh, I can't remember exactly what it went. It was basically Romania at that time. Uh, he ultimately gave into vampirism and became Alucard. Now, I don't know if it's ever implied that he's actually the first vampire in the series, but he's basically the strongest vampire. He is Dracula. Uh, he goes by Alucard by most general terms because his power has been sealed by the Helsing family. He serves, obviously, uh, Integra Helsing. Uh, Integra Wingate's, uh, Vin, uh, I think it's Wingate's Helsing. Wingate's, I think is her real name. Uh, as such, he's far beyond any normal physical human capabilities. He can move, run faster, or, or take more hits, uh, like physicality hits. Um, far right, supersedes any normal human can split a, on a uh, above average vampire in half, like his arm in half, no problem. Um, excuse me. Uh, yes, he's just he's just a physically much more powerful than the average human being. Um, but um, beyond that, his power, his strength really comes from his supernatural capabilities. He's capable of hypnotizing weaker-minded individuals. He is capable. He's an expert marksman. He's got dec centuries worth of experience. He can shape shift. Uh, in the forties, he was a go. Uh, Walter. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Walter was 12, and if I was remembered correctly, I was a girl. That implies the, the queen was interrupted again, my, interrupt my story again, Reggie. Go ahead, see what happens! Uh, but anyway. Uh, but yes, shapeshift. Uh, obviously he is, he can meld with shadows, just blend into them. Unlike m almost every other vampire, he can go out in the daylight. Which is very important, because most other vampires who aren't, like, true vampires can't go out in the daylight in the sunlight or they'll die but alucard actually can but he does state it is exhausting going out in the sunlight like it's not something he prefers to do if he can help it but he can do it um he implies that he's actually weaker during the day and then sunlight than normal um he's as i said an expert marksman his regenerative capability is second to none this man is basically regenerated from near nothing uh now that said there is speculation on how his regeneration actually works. He, vampires have standard level of regeneration. Alucard has a standard level of regeneration. Uh, but he it, it can be taxed. That's how, that's how he's been killed multiple times. But ultimately, it's, he, it's ultimately believed that because blood is the currency of the soul, when he feeds on someone, he steals their soul and keeps them in, uh, you know, he keeps the soul in his body and his essence. And that whenever he takes a mortal wound, he's just basically supplanting their soul, his soul for theirs. So anytime he would have been killed, it's just someone else's soul. And as, um, Integra basically put it, he's, uh, killed roughly two million ish people. So that's why it's so hard to put him down permanently. Uh, unless you are someone of, you know, true humanity and stature. Uh, because for someone he's who's worthy, because all Alicard actually wants to do is die when it really breaks down to it. Uh, he regrets his choice immensely. Uh, he releases his, rele he releases his restraints. Now through one through three, um, or three through one, he takes on the leather, look, get the gimp! <laughs> and takes on the leather gimp form, which basically uh, kind of, he has a lot of his powers a bit more oomph, and he can summon the Hound of the Baskerville. And Restraint, le uh, restraint Level 0, uh, restraint, uh, restraint Release Level 0, there we go. Uh, he basically releases all the souls kept up in him, they're at his beck and call, his command, and he takes on his true form of Vlad, Tep uh, Vlad Dracula, uh, which is arguably his strongest form, but his most vulnerable. His soul is now exposed. However, he can just return back to the alley card form he's been uh, in, uh, taking on, all this time, so it's a little varied of whether or not true form is the actual true form. But he is much more capable of being killed in this form. Um, now, that being said, it's still difficult. He's got centuries worth of experience. 
marksmanship with a sword. Who the... I just heard a horn honk. What was that about? Anyone here pop up? Um, maybe it was just something... If I hear it again, I'll have to redo the video. Because um, I'm like, I have to see who that is. Uh, but... Uh, wow, I, that just completely threw me off topic here. Uh, extra markers, he wields the jackals. And at the end of the series, he is pretty much omnipotent. Because he, because obviously we know if, you, if you're a fan of the series at all, he, um, and no, the series at all, he accidentally took in Warrant Offinger Schrodinger's, uh, Schrodinger, Schrodinger's soul. I always have a problem with that name. Who is basically Schrodinger's cat. Obviously, the parent, the thought experiment of Schrodinger's cat, if the cat remains unseen, is both living and dead, so long as it is unseen. <clears throat> now, the way someone could beat Schrodinger and just, you know, keep him dead is just shoot him and somehow, some way, have an all-seeing eye on him at all times, for the end of all time. <laughs> um, so that would be the way you would beat Schrodinger there. Of course, Schrodinger doesn't actually, isn't actually, like, an intimidating individual at all either. Uh, so Alucard, by the end of the series, did have all that ability as well, added on to his natural vampire abilities. So he is essentially now Schrodinger Alucard. Now, I'll use both versions, pre-Schrodinger and post-Schrodinger. So I will use both uh, versions of Alucard. For this. Now D, also known as Vampire Hunter D, is a Drampier half ha vampire, ha Drampier is half human, half vampire, travels around the frontier in search of the nobility. In almost every book, it is known that D has superior strength, skills, knowledge, in comparison to other uh, Drampiers. It is, it is hinted that this is because he has some special connection to his sacred ancestor. It is generally regarded that D is his son, though it's never explicitly stated. So he's a vampire hunter. Drampiers are half, he's basically Blade. He was Blade before Blade. Um, well, actually, I don't, when did this come out? Um, because I mean, Blade is in the comics long, possibly long before even this guy did. But um, either way, he he was he was a ma manga version of Blade, basically. He's described being a youth between seventeen and eighteen with a milky white complexion, powerful frame, and low voice. He has a thick, masculine eyebrows, a smooth bridge of the nose, with long, thin, cold eyebrows that are quite clear. His lips are described as being tightly drawn. His hair color is black. Women often take notice of his muscularity. As long, at long last, we have a man worthy of our pleasure, and not just a pretty face either. Look how muscular he is. Uh, when, B D drink, when D drinks his blood or motivate, is motivated enough, he can instantly transform into a full vampire. That's interesting. See, I, I'm not very big on vampire. I'm not, not that I hate it. I just don't. I'm not aware of it. So I didn't know he could drink. He drinks his own blood. Oh no. See, well, yeah, when D, well, yeah, when D drinks his blood. Now, does that mean when he just drinks his blood, or when he drinks his blood? I, I actually don't know that. Uh, or is motivated enough? He can instantly become transform into a full vampire during time. Uh, during this time, a complete change goes over him. He, his once steel will reserved eyes go from dark to blood red, shining a red light covers him. Everything, blah blah blah. Um, he's very cold and distant. But he's not intentionally abrasive person. His demeanor is forged from steel. Seemingly emotionless. Blah, blah, blah. We were looking more about his abilities here. Alucard is definitely going to be the more, you know, jovial of the two in this fight. So, okay. Over immortality. D is over 10,000 years and has oh, old and hasn't aged. Well, that puts him well above Alucard in terms of age and experience. All right. Regeneration. Higher generation and healing factor even beyond most nobles. D has the additional regeneration afforded by uh, countenance. countenance? and Carbuncle. Two shining examples of his powers when he allowed himself to be devoured by a group of five true vampires, or former pseudo-nobles, being torn into five major pieces. Those pieces were then ripped into smaller pieces. He burst forth from the head of those five several pieces and reformed effortlessly. He regenerated completely from the font of life, being severed uh, from a blade called Blue Blood that had left hand that left hand said could not be healed by anyone including him leaving him bleeding from every pore in his body uncontrollably, along with being poisoned afterwards. But occurrences without aid of the left, both occurrences without the aid of the left hand. So his regeneration, natural regeneration, actually does seem to be even beyond Alucard's. Now that being said, I might argue that Alucard's regeneration might be higher given the natural state of, given how his regeneration allegedly works. But if we're talking about like, just natural regeneration without, you know, souls and all that. does seem D also has the regeneration um, regeneration advantage. It would take a lot. To, it, he'd probably have to be completely vaporized or something. Or his head might have to be taken out. 
which that makes actually a lot of sense. And I say it a lot. Self resurrection, okay, he has high resistance to all forms of damage and high regeneration, and can be destroyed. Uh, so while he has high resistance to all forms of damage, he can be destroyed. This is different from dying, though. While mortal beings can be killed, he is not a mortal being. He's immortal. This allows him to regenerate from damage that would seemingly destroy the body, having a higher form of vampire resurrection. Even when certain weaknesses like being killed, one of the effects of sunlight syndrome, and without left hand to aid his revival, are shown time and time again that he's capable of reviving himself if needed. Two examples of this are when the twin Shadow Knights he killed, he resurrected himself after blood ran down his mouth, and he automatically drank it, reviving himself. Another scene from the Unholy War, where left hand was destroyed along with himself by Toma, de-resurrected despite not recovering yet from the sunlight sickness and being heavily poisoned without the aid of left hand. So He has also regenerated from injuries that are capable of killing nobles, such as the effects of blue blood, which drains and continues to bleed out lifeblood. He would normally be able to use... Uh, use he would normally use... Uh, yeah. Including lifeblood, he would... Including the lifeblood, he would normally be able to use to resurrect. Uh, so, yeah, uh, apparently he, death or destruction, this is a distinction a human would make. So he can't be, he can be destroyed, but he doesn't, can't die in the traditional way. Now, I'm guessing there's, he's probably got some weaknesses here, because if he doesn't have weaknesses, then this is going to get real, okay, um, anyway, hold on. Uh, we still got a way to go. Uh, super strength, or super, superhuman, yeah, strength was next on the list they were listing. Uh, his strength is unknown, his strength is X is 100 tons when cutting a mountain range. Well, that far exceeds anything Alucard did, so we'll just stop there. Human speed. The upper limits of speed are unknown, though he's been shown to move uh, as fast, so fast he leaves uh, after images in great leaps. Again, that does seem to be beyond what Alucard's shown. Uh, thrall ability. Ab able to enslave living beings into thralls by biting them. Well, Alucard can do that. That's, that's nothing. Durability can take extreme punishment, which includes being impaled, eviscerated, all his inner organs ruptured, absorbed, and nuke. It uh, <clears throat> absorbed a nuke blast. Okay. It survived a collision with a meteor that sent flying for miles. Having a miniature sun envelop his body, covered in magma, frozen at sub-zero temperatures, withstood blows from enemies that can crush 100 tons of mountain, crashed faster than light speed fighting Sigma, whoever Sigma is, also resisted counter encountered molecular manipulation of the body multiple times. Okay. I'm not even going to go into a scenario here, because at this point, it's kind of fucking obvious. <laughs> Agricard's getting his shit kicked in by this dude. And wait, oh, I'm not done yet. Multiple times, after being turned into water, or his insides transmuted into a sun. What the actual hell, Japan? <laughs> like, I, I... I get that there are characters that are overpowered and are cool because of that. And maybe this is one of those characters. But how is this right, exactly? How is this fair for a lot of competition? Like, don't get me wrong. I can, obviously, I can think of characters in an instant who uh, can uh, beat this guy. I can think of Thanos, for instance, would still probably beat this guy. Um, uh, Darkseid, Superman. Uh, although Superman would definitely probably have his hands full of this guy. Um... Superman, I got, and I'm, obviously I'm going with heavy hitters, but I can think of individuals who clearly could beat this guy. That's not the issue. It's, uh, let's, I, no, I, at this point, I've pretty much given you my answer. Vampire Hunter D wins. Unless there is a weakness that I'm going to find in a little while that specifically gives Alucard the edge. Alucard's going to win. At least, pre, and honestly, Schrodinger Alucard couldn't be, beat this guy. Now, Schrodinger Alucard wouldn't die against this guy, but he wouldn't beat him. Uh, reflex allowed him to deflect laser, deflect lasers with a sword at point blank range. That's pretty much light speed. Uh, superhuman, uh, stamina, being an immortal, having a, a, near, a high feeling factor. His stamina is nearly unlimited. Senses, that, none of that's anything. Uh, extremely powerful aura, aura. Uh, his aura can freeze and paralyze enemies in place, allows for travel even at night, sleeping, a uh, sheeping, sheeping the most powerful of creatures. That's an interesting terminology. Uh, killing Lust, somewhat of an extension of his powerful aura. Okay, we know what Killing Lust basically means. Blade Infinity. Zeno in Mercury Road has the ability... Uh, Zenon has the ability to extend his blade, making it infinitely long, using his murderous intent and powerful aura. He has this ability to do as well. He can literally... Okay, so if you know Bleach, there's a, there's a Bleach character named Shinzo, whose sword has the ability to extend a hundred uh, swords life, and then in his uh, full power, his Bankai... Uh, at least like a kilometer or something like that. Something like that. Now, that, when you think of that, it's like, that's insane. 
Apparently, this guy can do it to literally infinite lengths. Okay, high intelligence, whatever. Vast knowledge. I mean, again, combat experience. Again, millennia's worth of experience outranks alley cards, Sally. Marksmanship, weapons master, tracking, master tactician, stealth mastery, perpetual growth, uh, telepathy, and some telekinesis as seen in the animated movies. Of course, we are looking at the novels, mind you, but um, yeah. Um... Vampirism being a sacred ancestor of direct blood law, unlike other vampires, he can turn. Uh, he's able to turn others into vampires in various other states. Uh, full vampire, blah blah blah. Greatest vampire hunter on the frontier. He's known as the greatest vampire hunter on the frontier. All right. Strong will, determination, magic, and mystical powers and knowledge. Various mystical abilities. Uh, so I might have to take the Superman thing back because we know Superman has no special uh, resistance to magic, which for Superman is a weakness. Reality altering powers. He has acquired new time space powers in the latest novels, or just now, or has just now been given a chance to use them. He can destroy wormholes with a sword, create dimensional rifts with a cut. While in space, his lungs bursting. Uh, uh, while in space, his lungs bursting from lack of oxygen, he can cut through a very the very font of life as well as death essence itself, as proven in his fight against the guardians from above and the Wrath Knights. The Dark Road because Diaz's ability to mimic and learn special abilities of others using them more efficiently and other ways. Oh, God. Oh, I actually might have to take a Thanos one back, too. Dark Side, I still think, it takes him out. A Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet or Heart of the Universe? Probably, yes. But standard basic Thanos? I, now, I don't even know. His random parts stem for the fact that D is unbound fate, is unbound by fate and probability. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, what, is, what is this? Akashic Record. He's used uh, used the record in Tyrant Stars to rewrite the, the history of... The, oh, God. He can re, he's rewritten history. Oh, God. Anti-regeneration. He can negate regeneration. A goody. Darkness manipulation. Light creation. Miracle of blo a miracle blood light. I, I'm not even reading these descriptions. Anymore. Fold in space. He can make space fold into itself. <laughs> Free will. It's noted. It's noted over and over again. He's that he has hidden power, as stated by Twin, over his opponents. Uh, his will is unmatched, mysterious, and remains unbound by reality warping influences. <clears throat> I don't know if you call that free will or just willpower beyond belief. Twin bond. I don't bond with his twin D, brother D. Twin D. Blood sphere. A drop of blood that can only that's only the size of a coin blocks every form of attack physically from an enemy or requires a sacrifice of one's life to destroy it. Uh, oh, and then there's his left hand. D's constant companion is, is his talking left hand, which sometimes, for to his left hand, is revealed that is some sort of symbiotic entity that has taken up residence in his hand. Although, why it has is not clear. The hand, uh, or lefty as fans, is affectionately turned to. It appears to have supernatural powers independent of its host, and occasionally uses them to help D. More often than not, however, the lefty generally prefers sitting back and letting D do the work, usually throwing a sarcastic comment or, t a comment or two. But it's still as well. Okay, so D does have weak D is not infallible. He does have weaknesses. Okay. Sunlight syndrome, heat exhaustion. An affliction common to vampires, usually uh, usually happening every once every six months. Con D's constitution and extraordinary physiology seem to be have a prolonged resistance to condition a uh, condition limiting it to only once every five years. During this time, long periods of sunlight will weaken D greatly. The symptoms manifest without warning. Uh, and even the parasite uh, can't detect or protect what will happen, his left hand. Okay, so he's got a standard weakness of sunlight, but only happens every five years or so. All right. Burial? D buries himself to regain his strength from his heat exhaustion. He digs into the ground with only his head exposed. He is vulnerable to attack during his time. How long he stays buried varies with the severity of his condition. And bloodlust. Like all those of noble blood, D is afflicted by uncontrollable desire for blood. D, D can seemingly go for long periods without drinking blood, but at times leaves him vulnerable for, desire to, oh, uh, for his desire to overwhelm. It takes an extremely long uh, odor of blood, assuming. It, yeah, it takes an extremely long odor of blood later in the novels. Uh, he may have become he may become a resistant desire, may also be linked to his berserk like rage, the ability to take a change full vampire, usually drinking his own blood to transform. When the desire to, or to take uh, over immediately start, yeah, um, he will attack and kill ally or foe. The parasite seems to be able to stay off the attack long enough for the person to escape. Uh, so yeah, the only th his only weakness is sunlight sickness, basically. Yeah, vampire under D is kind of broken. Like his only weakness is only his only real weakness comes up every five years. <laughs> so again, 
Thanos, say, I'm going to use an example. Thanos of the Infinity Gauntlet could just, honestly, Thanos of the Infinity Gauntlet could probably actually erase the existence because as strong as the rally warping power seem to be, they are not that powerful. He can't change the universe, per se, from what I can tell. Um, so, yeah, something like that could beat him. But someone like Alucard, frankly, is getting his teeth kicked in. Schrodinger Alucard's the only one he would survive, sure. But he couldn't beat this guy. Actually, in theory, he could just outlast him until the sun sickness uh, takes effect. And at that point, then, sure. Then it's as Schrodinger Alucard could win. But standard Alucard without... Uh, Alucard. Alucard without Schrodinger? So? Oh, no. No, 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 no. That man that man is going down hard. It's like hard. Um, so, ultimately, yeah. Um, I I got a Vampire to D, man. Vampire to D all the way. Novel version. Let's be clear. This is the novel version of Vampire Hunter D. Um... That so let me see if the manga comic or whatever is different at all. Um, uh, may it may be it may be that the manga uh, or the the other versions of them are a very different interpretation of them that Alucard might actually stand a chance against. But no, Vampire Today wins like it's fatality. Seriously, like I'm, as I'm you saw me too as I was reading this, I'm like the hell. Like, why did you, why did you make, uh, like, I guess, sometimes it's for a joke. Like, Saitama is kind of a, he's not a gag character, he's a parody more than anything else. But they just kind of go hand in hand to a little degree. They're not the same exactly, but they do kind of go together. But sometimes I don't get why characters are so powerful. I really don't. That's why I've actually never been a Superman fan. No, that's not true. I've never been a huge fan of Superman. There are interpretations I like. I like the Justice League animated stuff, and I like the DCEU interpretation of Superman. But the problem is, is that you may... I get it. The story of Superman, and apparently the Superman and Lois TV series on CW, which is really good from my ear. I have no interest in watching it myself, but it's really good uh, from what I'm told. So support that. They make the story more interesting because, A, he's able to face off against a few opponents that actually can take him a little bit, but they the whole kryptonite thing comes into a factor a lot. But B, it's more about his personal relationships, and that's apparently where Superman's character is the most interesting. But the fact is, you that's the only reason he, it's that's the, the only reason it's the most interesting is because you made him so strong, that's the only way you can make him interesting. So, and they, you had to create opponents uh, that were so powerful to take this guy on because he was so powerful. Uh, anyway. So, yeah, Vampire D wins. Let me know if you think Alicard could actually win. Like I said, Schroeder Alicard could, in theory, just outlast this dude, wait to get his revenge, and then just boom. Because Alicard can function in the sunlight without that sickness happening. Um, at least that's the way vampires in his world work. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. What do you think? Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, though. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit that bell if you want to be notified. I'll be back later today with Peter Rabbit Review. Can you tell I'm looking forward to that? Uh, anyway, uh, at least I signed the heights yesterday. So thanks a lot. Have a, uh, thanks a lot for watching. See you later, folks. Have a good one.